In this video, we're going to be creating a vintage suitcase. We're going to use Maya, Substance Painter, then we'll import this asset into the Unity game engine. First, we'll have to do some research as to what kind of a design we want to create. Because we're going to be designing this for the game engine, we're going to want to go for some real world dimensions. So one way to figure that out is to pretend like you're shopping for the item. Um, and then you can find one that sort of similar to what you were going for and gather some information about the dimensions from there. So I'm going to kind of average these together to come up with the size that I want. The units in Maya are based off of centimeters and in Unity the units are based off of meters. So what we're going to do is pretend like one of these units is a meter and then that way it'll just uh, translate over in Unity. I looked at these different objects and looked at their dimensions and such and I found some dimensions that I liked. So these are the values that I'm going to go with. Now usually what we get are inches, so what we need to do is we can Google inches to meters and then we'll get a nice little converter from Google. So now we can go in and type in these values. So 5 inches is this many meters, 23.5. Alright, now then we'll take these values and create our cube in Maya using these. In Maya, we're going to create a cube and then in the channel box under the inputs, we're going to type in these values. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste them. Now as we copy and paste, whatever they labeled as width, length, and height in Maya, we'll see that we have width, height, and depth. So it's not a big deal if it doesn't quite correspond to the um, one that we thought it would because we can just take this and uh, rotate it the way we wanted it to be. So I'm just going to have my suitcase lying down. So I'll just rotate that 90 degrees. So let's begin by modeling the middle part of the suitcase. So we'll select our object, shift right click, the multi-cut tool. When we hold down Shift and Control at the same time, we get an Insert Edge Loop tool that will snap. So we'll click in the middle. Nice. Now I want to have an inset in here where this line's kind of going inwards. So I'm going to right click, go to Edge Mode. I'll double click to grab this whole loop. And then I'll use my Shift, right click, Bevel Edge. By default, Bevel Edge is just going to split that edge into two. And I'm going to split it into three, so that way I still have a middle edge to play with, but now I have two on the outside. And then I'll play with the fraction value until I get a distance that I like. I think that's okay. Now I can double click and grab this middle edge loop and then just scale it in. So I'll hit R to go to my scale tool and then just scale that in slightly. We can use this little cube to scale it in both the Y and the Z here. Now if it's doing too much, once this is selected and it's yellow, you can use your middle mouse button to kind of smoothly adjust it. So if we want it to go just a little bit less maybe, there we go, that looks good. Then I'm going to right click, go to object mode and take a look at it. Now something else we could do to add just a little bit of definition is to make that edge a hard edge. So I'm going to right click edge mode double click to grab the loop, shift right click, soften harden edge, harden edge. There we go. Now that it'll create it as a hard edge and I can see it really distinctly. Okay, now I don't want these edges here to be super sharp so I'm going to go ahead and smooth these out. So I'll just go to edge mode and I'll select these edges here. So I have all the outer edges selected for the corners, the, these lines here, and then I'll shift right click and do a bevel. And once again, bevel is just going to split that and so that's a good way to quickly round something. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to go with a segment. Let's do two segments so that way we have a nice somewhat roundedness, but then I also get this edge in the middle that uh, is kind of nice. You know, if you want to go with more detail, go for it. 
but I'm going to keep mine relatively simple for this example. Okay, let's take a look at it in object mode. Now, if any of these edges here end up becoming hard edges, what you can do, so for example, like right here, that looks like that's a hard edge, and then right here, that's a hard edge, we can select the entire object, or just the edges. In this case, I'll just grab the whole object, shift right click, soften edge, soften edge. That'll soften all of them, so I'll just have to go back and harden that middle one again, but it's a little bit easier than having to pick and choose. Oops. So double click, harden. Now I have a pretty decent looking base here. I have the base down. Uh, I'm going to create the handle. I want to create some locks. I want to have some hinges on the back. Um, and then I also want to have these corner pieces that will be like metal. So I'm going to go ahead and make those corner pieces next. So to do this, I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this whole model. Um, and so before I do that, let's take a look at these transforms. You'll notice that the transforms are pretty easy going. They're just zeroed out, you know? So if I duplicate this, and then we're to drag the duplicate over. That's control D to duplicate. Um, now it has a transform there and if I zero it out, it's just going to go back into place. So I'm just going to use this copy to create those corner pieces on and then when I'm done, I'll put it back where it should be. Now to make sure this other, uh, this original copy doesn't get in my way, I'm going to go ahead and isolate the second one. So I'll select it. I'll come over here to the top of my viewport menu and click on this button here. That will isolate this object. All right, I'll hit F to frame in on it. Now we'll go in and we'll create some edge loops for these corners. So I'll shift right click. We could do the insert edge loop tool, which will give us a free form kind of tool, or we just click and drag. So we're kind of guessing with this one. Um, that one's fine. I'll go ahead and just control Z undo that. Um, the newer cut tool, so if I go to object mode, shift, right click, multi-cut. Um, this is the one where we can create cuts on it, but then if we do control, it turns into an insert edge loop. And if we hit shift, it turns into a snappy edge loop. So that can be kind of neat in certain situations. Um, in this case, I think we might end up doing some eyeballing. We could just create one and then mirror it. So, if we don't want to have to worry about making all of these guys even, we can just focus on one. So let's do that. So, here we go. Okay, so this little part here is going to give me the corner that I want. So let's take a look. Do I like it? We can just grab these edges and bring them in if we want to change how big it is or how small. I think that's fine. So then what we'll do is I'm going to grab all the faces that make up this corner and then I'll extrude those out. So shift right click extrude face I'll pull them out with the Z to get depth. It's going to make it grow outwards, which is not really what I want. I kind of want it to taper inwards. So I'll click on the scale cube here, which will then give me the scale gizmo in the middle. And then I can transform it in all of the axes. And I can play with the depth a little bit. There we go. I think that's kind of what I want. Now I may want to go in and maybe, let's see, maybe I'll bevel this edge just to soften it a bit. All right, so what I can do next is I'll go ahead and grab the faces for it again. Okay, so I only have that, whoops, I only have that object selected. And then I'll shift select all of the other faces so that way I can invert and select everybody else and then I'll delete them. And so now 
I'll de-isolate this object and then put its transform back to where it was and then it snaps nicely to that corner. Its pivot is still in the center of the world, the center of the suitcase's base, so it just very easily snaps together. And we could just go in and mirror this object over a few times to cover all the corners. So let's take a look though and make sure there's nothing else we want to do to this object. Uh, I'm going to soften its edges. And I think yeah, I'm cool with it. If you wanted it to be smoother, um, you could definitely play with that. Maybe we could bevel these corner edges a little bit. That's kind of nice. So you can have some creative freedom on how you want yours to look. Let's see, maybe I'll play with this edge loop. So I'll select it, shift right click, slide edge tool, and then with my middle mouse button I can slide this around. It's very slight. Alrighty. So I think I'm happy with this little corner. So to get this corner to the other sides, we're going to go ahead and mirror it. So just to make things clean, I'm just going to go ahead and erase, or excuse me, uh, delete its history. So we can do an edit, delete by type, history, or click on our button here on the shelf. I'll select the corner piece, then we'll do shift right click, mirror. Um, it's just going to use the default options at first, which might work for us. In this case, they did. Um, we are going to have to eventually go in and play with these, but basically there's the axis that it's mirroring on. Um, sometimes we have to change how it's mirroring, so in this case it's mirroring based off of the world, which works for us because our pivot is right at the very center of the world, the center of the grid. So that's perfect for us. Um, it did it on the x-axis, which just knocked it over here to the left side. So then what we can do, I'll hit Q to exit out of this, and then we'll grab our new object that we have here, and we'll mirror it again. We'll just go ahead and change the axis, so I'll switch this over to Y, and then now it mirrors it that way. I'll hit Q to exit out of that, select my new object again, and let's try the other way. Shift right click, mirror. Okay, let's try on the Z. Okay, great, that's exactly what we wanted. We'll hit Q to finish that up. And then now we have our objects here. They'll have some history, so we can just go ahead and delete the mirroring history. Okay, also I wanted to note about the mirroring process. So when we do our shift right click mirror, um, sometimes this direction, this minus might be uh, you might want this to be a plus or a minus, so if you ever get something like this where it just sort of turns into like this collapsed face, um, you may want to come in and play with that. So it can be a matter of choosing the right axis and then choosing the right direction. Uh, something else to note is that when you click away from this, you might feel like now you've, you're not in the mirroring process, but if you look over here, it's still your active tool. So if we were to click back on this, it's like we're still doing it. So that's why it's a good idea to hit Q to complete the process to exit that tool and then grab your new object and then do it again, rather than uh, doing it from this point. So just make sure you hit Q to end the operation. Next, we're going to work on creating the handle for the suitcase. So to get started, I'm going to create a cube, and I'll just make that smaller, and then just move it forward. Now what we're going to do is I want to align this up with my suitcase, so I'm going to change the pivot of this cube to be still at the center, but at the back of this cube, and then snap it to be along the surface of this suitcase. So I'll hit D to go into pivot mode. Now we can move the pivot around. I'm going to undo that. In this case, I want to snap it, so I'll select this axis as my active one, the Z axis. Now it turns yellow. 
And then I can use V for vertex snap. So if I hold down V, I can click and drag. And wherever my cursor is, is the destination of where it's snapping to. So it's snapping directly to that vertice. I can hit D to exit pivot mode. So now I can move the whole object around. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is snap this to the surface of the suitcase. So if we were to look at the suitcase, I'm going to snap it to like this vertice right here. So to snap it, I'm going to select this Z axis. Then I'll hold down V for vertex snap. And then I'll just drag it. I'll put my mouse cursor where that vertice is. And then it will snap to it. Now I could snap it to this vertice and then now it's along like this wall of the suitcase here. But uh, I don't really want this like gap to be showing. So that's why I'm aligning it to this vertice. All right. So now that its pivot is along there and its pivot is uh, towards the back of this cube, what I can do is scale it and then that way it'll always be resting on here. I can use that to kind of push it in. I can play with the size of it and I'm able to see it relative to uh, it being on that surface. Okay, so let's see, how big do we want this? Maybe. Maybe like that. Now if you're going with a, you know, precise reference, you can uh, look at your photograph, maybe turn those into reference images, and then uh, match it up with that. But in this case, I'm just taking some creative liberties and just eyeballing it and choosing a size I like. So this is going to be one part of the handle, and then the handle will come out of here, and then we'll have another part. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this object. So control D to make a duplicate. Then I'll pull it off to the side here. And so these two are going to make up my handle. So let's see, is that about how long it should be? That seems fine. Now what we want to do is bridge these guys together. So that way we have the handle being created between them. Now to weld vertices together, they have to be the same object. So we can't make this object merge with this object unless they're the same. So we need to grab both of these and then we'll do shift right click combine and now they're one object. Now after you do a combine um, that creates some history nodes over here um, that are keeping track of the old objects that used to exist. So it's always a good idea when you do a kind of combine you delete your history so that way it clears up any of those trash nodes um, and now we just have a clean outliner. Next we're going to bridge these two objects so what we need to do is delete these interfaces so I'm going to right click go to face mode select this interface delete it select this interface delete it I'll hit 4 to go to wireframe just so we can see better so now what I'm going to do is select those border edges here and then bridge them so we'll right click to go to edge mode. I'll double click to grab this border edge. Now we'll hold down shift and double click the next cube. So now we can bridge between those edges. So we'll do shift right click bridge with options. I'm going to do edit reset settings. So by default this creates a linear path. So it's just a straight bridge going from this to this. So if I hit apply, we can see that. So it just creates a straight bridge. I'll go ahead and undo that. Now if we choose smooth path, and then I'm going to come down here and add some divisions. It should give me a bridge that's kind of in an uh, arc shape. Now mine's not doing that. I don't know if it's my version, but uh, that should be what you're getting. I'll go ahead and undo that. Now, to give us the most control and to help us create this arched handle, we're going to use the smooth path plus curve. So I'll click onto that one. Uh, I'll change my divisions to be a little bit higher so that way we at least have something. We can adjust this afterwards. And then we can hit bridge. That will do it and close out the window. So now I have my mini menu with uh, the popular settings that I can change. So afterwards we can, while we're editing this, we can change this stuff. Now the smooth path plus curve, what it does is it bridges it, but if we go into wireframe, you can see that there's actually a curve object inside of here. 
And if you look in your outliner, you can see that now there is a curve. So you can select it in your outliner, or if you go to wireframe mode, uh, that might be a, an easy way to grab it. And when I have that curve object selected, you can see it selects the uh, polygon object as well, just showing that they're tied to each other. So the way we can edit the curve is you want to select it, and then if you hold down right click, you can access the components of this curve. So with polygons, we have our vertices, edges, faces. With curves, we have our control vertex, our edit points, and then you know object mode over here. Um, so we're going to go to control vertex, or CV for short. And so here we can grab the CVs and then move them around to edit our curve. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab these three in the middle and then I'll pull them forward. I'll go ahead and hit five just so we can see what that's looking like in shaded view. Then you can see that that's giving me the handle that I wanted. I can use my scale tool to maybe pull them closer in or push them further apart. And as we're doing this and creating this uh, handle, we might realize that we want more divisions. It might end up being a little bit more blocky than we wanted. So if that's the case, what you can do is you'll select your object again, and then now in the history, in the inputs, you should see your bridge because that's the last action that we did. So when we click on it, down here at the bottom we have our divisions. So we can change that. There's a little slider here you can play with by clicking and dragging. Um, I kind of have trouble using it, it's a newer thing. Uh, so what I like to do is select the uh, word, and then I go into my viewport over here, I hover around, and then I use the middle mouse button to just drag left and right. So that seems pretty good. That looks a bit better, I think. You know, choose what you think your, it looks good. You know the detail level that you're trying to go with. Okay, now something to note about this curve object that I found is this may happen to you because it depends which side you, you ended up working on. Um, if we were to take this, this curve and then we pushed it this way, it sort of gets twisted. Basically what's going on is that this curve seems to have a direction that it favors. This is sort of like the front, this is sort of like the back. So by doing it this way it gets kind of twisted up. So if you're pulling yours forward and it's twisting, if you pull it back, it won't twist. So if, you, if that's happening to you, just go ahead and work with your shape like this. Um, and then when you're all done, you can just rotate the object over. When you're happy with your shape and you like the way the handle's looking, then what we want to do is we need to delete the history because right now if we were to take this handle and maybe move it around, you would see it kind of wigs out and that's because this curve object is still tied to it. It's still controlling it. So if we went in and we deleted the curve, it would just pop back to what it it's originally looked like. So before we can move on to the next steps, once we're done using the curve, we should go ahead and get rid of it. So to do that, you want to select your object and then delete your history. And then now we're able to delete the curve. Now my handle is not in the middle of my suitcase, so uh, when we combined these two objects, it put my pivot in the center of it, so that works out great for me. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, axis here, and then I will snap this object to the grid. So I'll hit 4 to go into wireframe. So to snap it to the grid, we use X. So V for vertex, X for grid. It's up here at the top. You can see that the button that it's toggling on. So if I hold down X, I can grab this axis and then snap it. I'm going to add some detail to my handle. So right now I don't like that it's uh, so sharp right here, so blocky. Um, and also I'm going to separate the handle from these cubes right here. Like this will be made out of metal and then this will be a leather handle. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go to face mode, and then I'll select the handle part of it. I can hit 4 to make sure I have the faces selected, 5 to go back. Now I'll do shift right click, extract faces. We can look at the options. I want it to separate the extracted faces, 
Now it extracts them to be their own separate objects. So I'll hit Q to finish that up. Now I will right click, go to edge mode, and I'll grab the side edges of the handle. And I'm going to bevel them, shift right click, bevel edge. So that way I can make them a little bit more rounded. Now I don't want to have these hard edges, so I'm going to select my whole object, shift right click, soften edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and taper the ends, so I'll right click, go to vertex mode, and then grab the vertices that make up the ends here. And then use my scale tool to just taper them down. So I've gone in and I've adjusted my handle. Now something that I'm noticing is that it's kind of hard to see these pieces against the suitcase um, because it's all the same color, they're using the same material. So sometimes what I like to do when I'm working with uh, pieces like this is if we go up here to our viewport menu under render viewport 2.0 with options. Um, here you can change some things about your viewport. So if we scroll down there is screen space ambient occlusion. So you can open that up, click enable, and now it'll add some AO, some ambient occlusion, so some kind of uh, shading, some shadow to where objects are touching. Um, and that can just help break them apart and make it a little bit easier when you're modeling. Um, if you're using a, a lower end computer, maybe you don't want to do this, it might make your viewport lag a little bit. We can also come down here and turn on anti-aliasing, which I have already, uh, which will just make it a higher quality. Next, I'll focus on these side parts. Uh, my pivot is sort of off to the side here, so I'm going to center my pivot just so it's easier to deal with. And first what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab this edge loop once again that I had deleted the face from, and I'll just put the face back by doing shift right click fill hole. Now I'll select the edges of this cube, just the outer ones because I don't need to affect these back edges and I'll shift right click bevel just so I can add a little bit of roundness to it so it's not just a block. Now when it comes to this face back here we're never really going to see it so it's okay if we go ahead and delete it. Alright now since I have this other side I'm just going to go ahead and delete the other side and then I'll just mirror it over. So we'll select our object, shift right click, mirror, and then you know this turned out okay, it just mirrored along the X, but if yours needs to be a different axis just adjust these. You may need to adjust your direction. There we go. Now also I'll just go ahead and soften these normals, so shift right click, soften edges, Last, I just need to make sure that the edges of this handle look okay. So right here, there's sort of... I can kind of see this problem here, so I'm going to go through and adjust this. Now, if you're having trouble, your camera can't really see very close. Uh, what you can do is make it so that way your camera can see a little bit closer. So to do that, you come up here to your viewport menu, um, click on the button right here and that will open up your camera's attributes. It may not open it up the first time. Sometimes you have to click it again and that's just because it's trying to select the camera. You can always click on the leftmost button first to select your camera right here and then you can go to the attribute editor um, the way you usually do but this button should take you to it. Okay, now over here we have the near clip plane and the far clip plane. That's how close up your camera sees and this is how far your camera sees. So if we want to see closer, we can make this number a little bit smaller. And now we can see closer up. If we were working with something really big and we needed to see further away, you could add another zero to this to be able to see a little bit farther. For a final adjustment for these, I'm going to grab these vertices at the end. And then I'll just move them back so that way I don't see that area. That kind of affected the way this handle looks, so I'm going to go ahead and just pull it in a little bit more. There we go. I'll right click, go back to object mode, 
And I think I'm done with my handle. Next, I'm going to work on the latch for my suitcase. So if we do some research, you'll see that there are a lot of different latches out there when it comes to vintage suitcases. There's a lot of different handle types, too. Um, so you can kind of choose whichever one you like. Um, I'm going to go with one that's kind of like this. So it's always good to do some research. Um, and so if we look at this, we can kind of break it down into three parts. We have this back part, we have a middle part, and then this part. So I'm going to model it with those three pieces in mind. And while I'm modeling, I'm going to be referring to these images. I'm going to start this model similar to how I started the handles. So I'll create a cube. I'll scale it down, move it forward. And then I'm going to have it also align with the uh, surface here. So I'll hold down D, or excuse me, uh, hit D to go to pivot mode then select the axis that I want to snap with, V for vertex snap, and then snap it. D to exit pivot mode, then I'll snap this, I'll hold down V, I'll move it over to the side, and then now I can scale it down relative to the surface. Before I go into modeling the details, I'm going to block this out. So I have this first shape, and then what I'll do is Control D to duplicate, and then I'll snap this second shape. So V, snap. And then there's that third shape, duplicate. So now I have these three shapes. So if I'm looking at my image, I have these three shapes. And now I can come in and just size them up. For this part, I'm probably going to speed up when I'm adding in these details. Basically, we're going to be scaling them. We're going to be moving vertices. We're going to bevel the edges to create this to be rounder. We might insert some edge loops, so that way we can create the shapes that we want. So I went and I beveled this edge here. Now I want to bevel this edge surrounding here. Um, now one way to easily select this edge, because double clicking isn't going to work because it's no longer an edge loop. If we go to face mode, we can select this entire face. And then to convert your selection to the edges, you do control, right click, to edge, to edge. And now we have all the edges selected. Now that I have these three objects beveled and rounded out, I'm going to go in and add in those details, like the shape of this, and then the insets inside of here. So I'll insert an edge loop with my multi-cut tool, and then I'll go in and maybe adjust the vertices. So I've gone in and I've finished modeling these guys. Now, I'm not adding a whole lot of detail, um, keeping it relatively general. So I'm just going to go through and soften everything first. And then I'll go in and harden those parts. And now you'll notice that there's this nasty kind of dark line going on. And that's because these back faces still exist. And trying to soften a 90 degree angle between the faces. It doesn't really look very good. It gives you that harsh 
uh, normal. So um, what we can do is basically just delete these back faces because we're never going to see them um, and then that'll just clear that up. So I'll just go through, I'll select uh, this next one, this little capsule piece um, and then up here at the top I can isolate it and then now I can grab these back faces All right, and then for the next one, I'll select it, isolate it, and then select those back faces, delete. All righty, so now I have my latch. Next, we're going to model the hinges for the back of the suitcase. So if you do some research, there's a lot of different ones out there. Um, I'm going to go with one that's kind of like this. So what I'm going to do is create this back piece as one sort of part there. Um, I'm not going to do any holes. I'm going to just texture that on and then I'll have the cylindrical piece going down the middle. So to get started I'm going to create a cube. Uh, I'll scale it down. I'll move it back behind the suitcase and I'm going to do the same process I've been doing where I change the pivot by snapping it then snap it to my object uh, then I'll go ahead and scale it and now that I can actually see it on my uh, suitcase I can adjust it based off of that. Next I'll bevel these edges to round it out. Next, I'll add in the cylinder in the middle. So I'll create a cylinder. Whoop. I'll scale it down, move it back. I'm going to rotate it. And then the pivot of the cylinder is already in the middle of itself. So what I'll do is I'm going to snap it to the uh, middle of this object, so I'll take my pivot here, V for vertex snap. So now I can see it where it would be. Um, I'm going to go over to the poly cylinder inputs, so now I can change uh, the subdivisions, because by default it has 20 uh, faces going across. Um, so we're going to go ahead and lower that, maybe about eight. Depends on the level of detail you're going for. Now I would say choose something that is an even number so that way you have a line running down the middle instead of an odd number where you have a line in the middle and then the other side doesn't. Now once you have it sized up uh, what we can do is we don't really need this other half that's back here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this cylinder and then I'll isolate it. So then what I'll do is just delete the half that's inside of the suitcase. Delete. There we go. Uh, we can also go ahead and soften the normals here. That will be my simple hinge. The next thing will be to UV unwrap this item, but before I do that, I just want to make sure everything is the size that I want and it's in the right place. So what I'll do is for this latch object, for right now, just to make things easier, I'm going to go ahead and combine all the pieces so that way I can scale it all up together. Um, when I combine it, it does put the pivot in the center, so just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I think what I'll do is just go ahead and move it back. So D to enter pivot mode, V to snap it over, just so that way I can still size it up. I think I'll combine these too, just so that way I can size them up. If I want to mirror this over so that way it's not the same uh, distance is this one. 
I can select this and then mirror it and with the default settings it mirrors it based off of the world and because I modeled my suitcase where it's in the center of the world it's just mirroring it over pretty nicely so I could do the same thing to the hinge right now it's made up of two objects so I'll just go ahead and combine it to one object and then I'll move it over to about how far I want it to be and then when I'm happy with it I can do a shift right click mirror and it'll mirror it over okay now while I've been combining and doing all these things my outliner has gotten kind of messy so before we move on to the next step we should do some cleaning so I'm gonna select all the objects looks like my mirror is still active so let me hit Q to go to my select tool and then I'll delete my history and there we go that cleans up my outliner a lot in the end we're gonna combine this all to one object but when we're UV unwrapping we're gonna keep things separated and we may even separate some of these objects further um, just to make it easier when we're UV unwrapping now there's one more thing we have to do um, that's not correct about the suitcase this cut is not actually supposed to be along the middle of the suitcase and so we need to actually adjust our latches and our hinges and then this line in the middle because if we take a look at uh, suitcases the bottom half is usually a little bit bigger and that line is kind of slightly upwards the handle is still in the middle of our object but all this other stuff is needs to be moved up I'll select all the pieces and I'll go into vertex mode another way to do this is by hitting F9 on your keyboard and so then what we can do is I'll hop over to my other viewports using space and I'll just grab this middle area uh, I'll grab the latches make sure I have the hinges and I don't want the handle so I'll deselect that so I should just have the vertices for the middle, the hinges, and the latches. And so now I can adjust this so that way the bottom has more of that volume. When you go to object mode you might have to do it twice. Um, another way to do it is by hitting F8. Now I'll just do some last minute adjustments. I'm happy with the way all the pieces look and their size um, there's one more technical thing we have to do and that is to check for any end gons so those are faces with more than four sides um, we want to try to keep things quads and because this is a non deforming mesh it's not gonna bend like a noodle um, it is okay if there's some tries so to check for end gons what you want to do is you can select an object and then you go to mesh cleanup and then I'll go ahead and reset the settings so by default Maya will automatically clean up anything matching what we tell it what we're looking for so down here at the bottom you can say what it is you're looking for so we are looking for faces with more than four sides and guns now you can also change the scope so you could apply it to just your selected objects or you could apply it to all of them um, for right now I'll just do the selected like I said up here at the top Maya will automatically do it now usually we don't like this option instead we choose the second one the second one will just select the endgons and then we can go in and fix them so first I'll show you guys what it does when Maya does it so if I click apply because I know we had some endgons here it'll automatically do it and it'll do it by just uh, triangulating it just drawing edges everywhere and connecting everything and while that does get rid of the end gons um, you know for a character for something where we don't want it to be tries um, that's not really what we would want and then also sometimes seeing things triangulated it's not the most optimal way and then for us it's hard to see what's going on with the geometry so rather than having Maya clean it up we can click select and now when we say apply 
it will just simply select the faces that are the problem. So you can jump into wireframe to maybe see them a little bit easier. So it looks like this is a problem face. So I'll just close out of cleanup for right now. And then I'll go in and I think what I'll do actually is because it's affecting both of these sides, I'm just going to delete this half so that way I don't have to um, worry about it. And then I'll go into face mode. I'm going to double click to select this entire back element and I can isolate it on its own. So I can just isolate the faces that I have selected. And now I'll go in with my multi cut tool and I can cut in the edges so that way this is no longer an end gone. So what I'll do is I'll just cut across and I'll right click to finish. So click, click on the vertice, right click to finish the edge. Click on the vertex, vertex, right click, and then I'll do the same thing at the bottom here. Q to exit the tool. We'll unisolate it. Before we mirror it back over, let's do another check. So mesh, clean up, apply, and nothing got selected, so that means we're good. So I'll go ahead and mirror this over. Hit Q to exit my mirror. All right, so now we can check out any other objects. So I'll just go to mesh, clean up. I'll up change the scope to everybody in the scene. Ah, here we go. Oh no, we've got one on all of these guys. Well, the same thing is uh, true for this piece. We can just finish up one and then just re-mirror them. It's a pretty easy process. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and finished cleaning up the rest of this. I did have an end gone back here on behind the hinges. So I just went ahead and just with my multi-cut tool, turn it into quads. So I'll do one last cleanup, mesh, cleanup, apply, and I don't have any more end guns, so we're good to go. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and UV unwrap this.